Hello friends, I am here on behalf of Sri Lanka Unites to interview somebody whom millions of Sri Lankan youth adore. His charisma transcends all the continents and he is loved by millions. Even though I am an Indian, I am super excited to meet him, this Sri Lankan celebrity. So let's see who is. He is one of the finest Sri Lankan international cricketers and former captain of Sri Lankan national team. He is regarded as one of the greatest batsmen Sri Lanka has ever produced. He was a key member of the team that won 2014 World T20. He is role model to millions of Sri Lankans. Thank you Kumar Sangakara for having an interview with us. Uh, and I would like to begin with what is the importance of living in a diverse society? Give examples from your life, how it has helped. Well, I think one of the greatest fortunes that I have had is to be born in Sri Lanka. Um, not just because it is a beautiful country, um, but because of the diversity we have, especially in our people. I was born into a family, um, I was very fortunate, which is very financially stable, but at the same time, even at home, my siblings and I, we have you know, diverse character aspects that helped us to become who we are today. We all went in, in slightly different ways, but at the same time we had a, a common grounding um, of, of good values, of wholesome values, both um, at home and school. Um, and I think looking at Sri Lankan society at large, diversity is something that unfortunately has led to uh, more conflict than unity. Um, and especially if you take the, the past 30 years uh, where we fought um, quite a terrible war uh, against terrorism. Um, the real fact remains that Sri Lanka has been very resilient. Uh, we have risen again, and we are looking forward towards an inclusive, respectful, loving society which celebrates its diversity, which embraces it, and uses it to actually uh, make sense of, of themselves as a people, or ourselves as a people, and also to take the country forward into a new age um, where the people play the most important part in, in, in its development. Um, being in a cricket team, I think we've represented Sri Lanka to our utmost best wherever we've played our cricket, both on the field and off the field. Uh, we've been um, uh, a microcosm of how ideal Sri Lankan society should be because we have all the religions of Sri Lanka represented, all the ethnicities of Sri Lanka represented. Um, we have uh, very unique individual characters who coexist in amazing harmony, but not only that, through that diversity we put out spectacles of talent and sporting display that are enjoyed by people around the world and make not just ourselves but also our country very proud. Um, and having been a part of that, it really brings home how important and necessary diversity is to actual unity. Um, it's not a case of having, um, you know, 11 members of a cricket team being, you know, robots or, you know, being just like, you know, multiplicity with, with, uh, with Michael Keaton, where you know, you, it's just another version of yourself. You need to be different. And that is something that's made us very successful as a sporting unit and why not in society. You have travelled the world as a cricketer and you have seen different cultures, experienced them. So how has that experience worked for you and has it broken any of the stereotypes that you had as a child? Well, I think in, 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 in Sri Lanka, we, uh, it, it, it's, sometimes it's very easy to you know, label people. Um, or I think in any part of the world actually. Um, and I think it's, it's uh, unfortunately something to do with insular living. The more you are exposed to not just uh, differences in your own community and society, but also internationally. Uh, the more those barriers get broken down, the more your uh, mind expands, you, you open yourself up to new experiences. And <clears throat> that's the, you know you touch lives and you are touched by other lives. And I think that's one of the most important things that's happened to me through my cricket. I've been very fortunate to be able to play this sport. Um, but it, the most importantly, it allows me to travel meet people who I would have never met otherwise from <clears throat> various cross-sections of society, uh, from the poor economic classes to maybe the highest. 
um, and the experiences that I've shared and I've, I've, I've been open to have really enriched, I, I believe, my personality, my character, and my life. Um, and not just that, you know, having two young children, I take my wife and children on every tour with me. I've, I've seen them just develop so much more just by that travel experience, uh, by meeting people from other cultures, by seeing what's out there in the world on offer to them in their future, um, how much potential is out there and how much out there, how much is there for them to explore. Um, and I think that cross-cultural, um, international um, community relationship building is a, a vital part of the modern world. Um, whereas societies around the world can not only understand each other, but again, um, break down the petty barriers of, of politicization, of, of, of <coughs> um, religious fundamentalism, um, of um, racism, um, and, and try and coexist and understand um, each other a lot better. Um, it's probably quite simplistic to think that will solve any of the world's problems, but at least we will have respect and love um, mutually, uh, which I, I think would be very beneficial. At least uh, when you look at, uh, you know, when I look at my children, that's how I want them to grow up. I want them to be good people with good sound values, who are open to to really loving and respecting another person from wherever they may be from. What, according to you, are the challenges in Sri Lanka to embrace the diversity in our society? I I think. Um, it, it's got to be with probably prior conditioning. The messages we've received, um, especially from parents, from school, uh, from your elders, uh, from community leaders, uh, from government, I think um, at various times we've got mixed messages. Um, uh, at various times we've been asked to look at each other with suspicion. Um, and I think those attitudes are changing and have changed very quickly and very, very fast, especially having gone through what we did for 30 odd years. Um, and now Sri Lanka has no choice but to change because if we don't change, um, uh, we, we cannot guarantee that his history won't repeat itself. And for us, that is something that is impossible to accept. We need to change, we need to move forward, we need to embrace each other, we need to embrace and unite in diversity rather than go the opposite way. Opposite. We've seen the terrible consequences of that happening. Um, and I think as a society we're very amenable to that. And I think it's got to start with the rebuilding of societies that have been torn apart by the war, by ensuring that the disadvantaged communities in those war torn areas that have uh, been underprivileged for so long um, gets um, absorbed into mainstream society um, in, in a manner that they can live in Sri Lanka with absolute dignity. They can have a wholesome and bright future for themselves and their children. And that um, they become actual valued stakeholders of a journey forward, be it economic development or social development. Um, in any way the country progresses, they have to become an integral part of that progress. Okay, uh, the next question is, what would be cricket without diversity? I think I think cricket would be would would die. Um, cricket or any sport is a, is a is a funny thing. Um, sometimes the sportsmen and women who actually play it can get a bit carried away and think that they are the be all and end all of a sport. But actually, it's a spectator. It's the people of all backgrounds of all ages. Um, from all walks of life that come and watch us and give us a stage on which we can entertain them. And without that, we, are, we die, we, we, have, we have nothing to show. Um, our lifestyles, what we achieved, um, so-called record, so-called fame, uh, it's, it's really hollow without having that gallery to play for. Um, and in that gallery, uh, you see uh, diversity at its best. You see, if you play an international cricket match, you see the difference of, of from person to person, the way they cheer, the way they support people, the way they love um, their cricketers. In Sri Lanka, uh, we get a lot more space, we get a lot more privacy from our spectators. We get, in India, it's completely the other way around. You get mobbed, they, they deify your, your, your cricketers. Um, in sport itself, public, the public tends to polarize. 
um, towards certain characters who are slightly different. You take Lasit Malinga in Sri Lanka, Mutai Murlidhar in Sri Lanka. You know, they've, they've really garnered so much support um, just because they're very unique and they're very different. Um, and they have their own way of, of celebrating their skill in such a manner that it, it just thrills the crowds. Um, and it inspires a huge generation of, or, or large number of the, of the younger generation, not just to take up sport, but also to look at them and admire them for who they are as people, to, to try and emulate certain characteristics within those people that make them good people, and which, which makes them wholesome people who positively influence uh, society. So I think diversity in that essence is essential. So what advice will you give to the millions of students in Sri Lanka to overcome these challenges? And have you yourself faced any such challenge in your childhood? Um, I don't think I have faced a challenge as such. I have faced challenges in my own way, but I can't tell you that you know I've overcome obstacles that were life-threatening or that scarred me for for life in, in, in a certain way that I had you know um, uh, you know a psychological injury because of that. I I don't. I've, I've been one of the fortunate few. I think um, not just from a Sri Lankan point of view, but but, but globally. Um, my advice for, for young people is, is, is very simple. Be open. Educate yourselves not just to, to, to further yourself but to open your mind to knowledge and to experience and temper your, your ideas, um, your beliefs um, with, with good and wholesome values and experiences. And be open to exchanging ideas and thoughts with people without being scared, without being suspicious. You know, we've got to, I probably believe we've got to lead a, a, a more simple life where we work a lot more on trust, where, where we try and move away um, uh, from being too cynical, uh, from being too judgmental, um, uh, too analytical in a sense, you know, and, and be a lot freer. Um, if we can do that with it, on an interpersonal basis, I think that'll be uh, something very special for countries as they as they grow and uh, become even closer on a global stage. Um, young people, I think, today have a huge responsibility. Um, their life's a lot more complicated. The expectations of them are very high, not just from their families and parents, but from society and the world at large. Um, it's a lot of pressure, but I don't think you can be afraid of that. I think that's what we're here to do. If you want to change the world, if you want to change society, start with changing yourself. Try and change one life, and who knows, that life might be the life that changes everything, the whole world for you and for the generations to come. But be honest, be open, and work hard. Yeah. Uh, you have joined hands with Muthaya Murli Dharan to form an organization that is dealing with so many problems and so many challenges. Do you see that the partnership between different communities can actually work towards making Sri Lanka a united country? I think partnerships between communities is exactly what we need to have and what we've started now and what we're trying to build. Um, and my partnership in Murli and the foundation he and Kushu Gunasekhar started, the Foundation of Goodness, um, has really touched my life, my family's life, um, because of the, the enormous scale of work it does. Uh, the foundation maintains 25,000 people plus annually uh, all around Sri Lanka. Um, our main aim is to try and bridge the, the gap between the rural and urban communities and especially working with the unprivileged and with children and with a special focus on the north and the east um, where we are trying to have as many facilities for those children available so that they can progress in life. Uh, and that relationship building because the, the best example of that is we travel to the north and the east since 2009 every month without fail until now and we're going to continue to do that. <coughs> That exercise at the start was not to go and give handouts. It was to try and build trust with the communities that we were trying to be to partner with, 
to ensure that those children in those areas have access to better facilities and better opportunities. And that trust building exercise was the foundation upon which we built our, our social programs. So, so that inter-community relationship building, trust building, is going to be the cornerstone of the newer Sri Lankan society. What are your personal aspirations for the country? Where do you see Sri Lanka in the future? I think mean, it's, it's very simply um, for all of us to, to aspire and to embrace high ideals and to live our lives to try and ensure that those become reality in society, to ensure that we have absolute respect and the application of the rule of law, um, to ensure that the Sri Lankan society is just and good and their common decency and all the values that have garnered us so much respect around the world and so much love is never eroded. Yeah. What does equality in Sri Lanka mean to you and what gives you hope? The hope for me is, is the Sri Lankan people because they have everything in them um, uh, to, to effect change for, for good. And, and I think that people and a large part of our people are trying to do just that. Um, equality in Sri Lanka has to be f number one uh, in front of the law, uh, where people are, 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 are treated equally, no matter where, whether the influence is high or, or minute. Um, it is also about uh, accepting people equally, no matter what religion they belong to, or what caste or ethnicity they belong to, and understanding that the opportunity in Sri Lanka, socially and economically, has to be equal, no matter which school they went to, whether be it private or public, whether they are Sinhalese, Tamil, Burger, Muslim, whether they are Buddhist or Christian, uh, Christian or, or, or follow of Islam. I think we should come to a state where we don't care, we lose that, that dividing uh, and selfish identities and we move forward to a united Sri Lankan identity so we can justly be very, very proud of our country and ourselves as citizens of Sri Lanka. Uh, well, to the youth of Sri Lanka unites, I think all I have to say for you is unite for good and unite for better change and more effective change and for you to become the agents of that change.